Welcome back to MGM and Painting for the Average Joes. Today we are going to tackle a Flames of War Crusader II from the Armored Fist box set. Getting a lot of these painted up for my British mid-war forces, figured I would share one of them with you. As a quick note, these paint schemes may not be historically accurate from a color perspective, and this is painting for the average Joes, not painting for the average pros, so don't expect any advanced techniques or anything like that. This is all really basic stuff that I feel anybody can do. So let's grab a brush and get stuck in. I decided to prime this model with the Army Painter's Desert Yellow. I had a tough time finding the DAK Sand Spray, which is supposed to be used for these models, and I decided to go with whatever I could find that was closest to me that I thought looked best. But I am going to be doing the turret separately, so I've got those two here, giving this a light spray of the Army Painter's Desert Yellow. And I picked this up from Artist Opus. He is very well known for his dry brushing, does an outstanding job, and he uses what he calls a dampening pad, which to me almost looks like a piece of foam uh, with a little bit of water in it, and that's kind of what I'm going to do here. A lot of times when you dry brush, you do end up with a chalky kind of finish, and if you have just a little bit of water on your brush, it will make a massive difference. So it's not totally a dry brush. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some Vallejo Iraqi sand, and with a little bit of water on my brush from that dampening pad and getting the majority off onto my palette, I'm going to start to work that in across the panels and all of the armor of this tank, giving it its first highlight. You can see here how the color is easily picking up over that desert yellow, and we will just work our way around the miniature, giving it its first base coat. And with that step complete, we will have a nice even base coat over the model, and we are ready to move on to the camo details. And for this, I'm going to be using Russian Uniform. It is a great green color. I think this was the old color before they switched over to Firefly Green and the Colors of War. And I'm just going to kind of try to follow what I see on the box art, almost like this wavy kind of camo pattern along the bottom, and then put some streaks going across the top. Notice I do have the turret still off at this point. I'm going to go ahead and draw that camo pattern on first and fill in the lines, and then we will put the turret on to match that up. So with the outline done, we'll proceed to go ahead and filling that in. And to note with this color, it is a bit opaque. You may find that it takes at least two, maybe even three passes to get a nice even coverage and good green color on the model. Now with that filled in, we will then put the turret on. This took me about two to three coats to get a nice even green on here. And now that I know what the pattern is like on the hull, we're going to go ahead and pop the turret on. And I am going to do the same thing here on the turret to mimic where it's going up from the hull. And with that step complete, the camo pattern and base colors for the armor are pretty much done. We're going to move to a German gray, which is what I use for my black color. And we are going to go ahead and put a little bit of water to this so it is a little runnier than normal. And we're going to work on painting the tracks. So you do want to be a bit careful in this step, but adding a little bit of water to your brush so it flows nice and easy. We're just going to go across the tracks and try not to spill over onto the lighter colors. And just like that, our base coats are done, so we are going to now give this model a wash. I will remove the turret again so I get nice even coverage, and I'll be using Citadel's Agrax Earthshade. So going to be putting this all over the model, including the wheels, the treads, and everything, really pushing it away from the flat spots, getting it into all the nooks and crannies, and this is just straight out of the pot. All right, giving that at least 30 to 40 minutes to dry, you can see the wash has really filled in all of those details, giving us some nice definition, but it has darkened the model down quite a bit. So we're going to go back with our Iraqi sand and just start to give a dry brush over the entire model, being kind of light when we get to the green areas. This will do two things. One, it will lighten the model back up, but it will also give it some weathered appearance of dirt and sand and things that have really just kind of caught on to the vehicle as it's been through the desert. 
I am using a flat brush for this so I can really get the edges of the model, but I will also be going over some of the flatter panels as well just to lighten those back up. All right, next I'll use Vallejo's Beige Brown, and I'll be using this color just to get any tool handles or things like that that may be strapped to the tank. And then using Vallejo Gunmetal, I will go in and get the shovels, anything that are on the model like tow cables and things like that. Okay, next we are moving back to dry brushing, and I will use Vallejo's Natural Steel. And I'm going to go through and just give a light dry brush to the tracks to give them a metallic metal kind of feel. Okay, for the commander in the tank, I go back to Army Painter's Desert Yellow. I do not have the British uniform paint in my Vallejo collection, so I just grabbed something that I thought was close. And the Army Painter Desert Yellow, that's what I'm going to go just to give this a base coat, avoiding the recesses because we've already given it a shade. So just really kind of getting those higher areas, the flat spots, leaving that shade into the recesses. Next, I'm going to go in with Vallejo Dark Flesh, and I'm just going to be filling in the facial area as well as the hands. Anything that is skin tone will be getting Vallejo Dark Flesh. Once again, you want to try to avoid the recessed details and just try to paint on the highest spots. If you do happen to go over the entire face, it's very easy to quick with just another wash and then highlighting it back up. Next, I'm going to get some of the other details, such as the radio. I'm just going to use my German Gray for that. And then I'm also going to go through and give a highlight to the uniform. And for that, I'm going to go back to Vallejo Iraqi Sand and just kind of get the top of the folds of the cloth and the highest points on the uniform. To finish up on the face, I'm going to go back in with Vallejo Flat Flesh and do pretty much the same thing, getting the higher spots, the nose, the eyebrows, cheekbones, and fingers. While small, just take your time, as the details on a figure, even as small as this one, can really bring out the entire model. So at this point, the model still felt a little dark to me, so I grabbed Vallejo Game Color Bone White and gave a light dry brush, really catching the high points of the model to bring those out a little bit more. I also elected to go back in with my Russian uniform to highlight that camo, leaving a hard edge on the outside. So again, not the best paint job in the world, but something that I am happy with. I have a lot of these to paint up, and hopefully you will be seeing my mid-war British on the table in the near future. I would like to say thank you so much for watching this video, and thank you to my 2022 Coffee Supporters Club. If you'd like any information on that, there will be a link in the description. Quite frankly, if you've watched the video this far, you've done more than enough to support my channel. Really appreciate you being here, and we'll see you next time.